On this episode of Craftastic TV, we're going to be creating this really fun unicorn pendant that's kind of inspired by Ferrari. I am Jennifer Priest from Hydrangea Hippo, and I'm going to show you how to make this project from start to finish. So the first thing you need is a bezel from Ice Resin, and this is a shield shaped bezel, and I put some book page paper in the back of it, and I'm taking a one ounce plunger of Ice Resin. It's a two part epoxy resin, and I just put the whole thing in a little paper cup, and I'm mixing it with a uh, wooden spoon or a wooden uh, like crafty stick. So you want to mix this for two minutes until it's crystal clear. And you can kind of see like strings of like translucent, um, like iridescent stuff in the resin. That means it's not mixed yet. So you want to keep mixing, keep mixing, keep mixing. And once you have it mixed, um, you're ready to pour it. And what I wanted to do here is put like some opalescent effect there in the back of the bezel. So I'm using a product called Shattered Inclusions that's from Ice Resin as well, as well as some um, German glass glitter. This is like a rust colored glass glitter. And I have another bezel here. Usually when I pour one bezel, I'll pour multiples at a time. So I just sprinkled some of that in the back. And then when I pour the resin on, it's going to kind of move all of that um, shimmery stuff around. And the reason you want to use a glass glitter with this is it's heavier. So if I was to use like a plastic craft glitter, it wouldn't, wouldn't work right. Now I die cut a unicorn out of this really fun product called Rolex and I put it in my bezel and it turned translucent. So I decided that's not really gonna work and then part of the uh, unicorn didn't wanna fit in there so I had to trim it. This is a die cut from my friend Marisa Powelko. She has a new line with Sizzix called Modern Surrealist and it's kind of very 80s and so I ended up going with a striped glitter uh, cardstock. I die cut that and I put that inside the bezel and then poured more resin over top. Now I'm taking two pieces of chain and I like the look of multiple pieces of chain on a necklace. And so I just took um, two lengths of chain that were equal lengths and then I folded them in half to find the middle and attached the pendant to those uh, pieces of chain in the middle with some jump rings. Now this is some really pretty silk ribbon that I got from May Arts. And I kind of measured, you know, how much I would need, like the length of the necklace like the length of the whole chain plus maybe six inches and what I'm doing is I'm threading the um, ribbon through the links of the chain like maybe every 12 or 15 links I was just kind of guesstimating like maybe every three inches and every time I threaded the ribbon through a link I tied a knot in the ribbon so this just gives this a more feminine effect because um, at first it kind of started looking like you know urban uh, rapper guy it was strange so I needed it to be a little more girly so I put this ribbon through and I tied the knots so that they weren't symmetrical I didn't want them to, to match up on either side then I took and I don't know the proper name of these I got these from Cousin Corporation you can get them at primabead.com they are like a little crimpy bead that you can wrap around a piece of ribbon or fibers or bunch of pieces of wire and you crimp it down and it kind of wraps around whatever the item is so this is a good way to finish off the end of that ribbon and then um, I use jump rings to attach that little crimpy bead has a hole in it so then I use jump rings to attach the two pieces of chain to the crimpy bead with um, jump rings so that's going to hold everything in place and secure and make sure that all the weight of that pendant is not just resting on that little piece of uh, silk ribbon. So again, I repeated it on the other side and I used some Westcott scissors to cut the ribbon because they're really sharp and I didn't want to have this fray a lot. Um, silk ribbon can fray really easily. So I wanted a nice sharp cut and then I put the little crimp bead on again using jump rings to attach those two pieces of chain to the little hole in the crimp bead. And then to the crimp beads, I'm attaching my clasp and that finishes off the necklace. So here you can see the opalescent background there in the pendant. And then you can see kind of the asymmetrical um, ribbon tying on that finished piece. So thanks so much for tuning in. Hit that subscribe button and head on over to Craftastic TV to see more videos and crafty goodness. Bye.